So uh, Noel it does a lot of things, including for residential as well as office. I'm going to say I think of it as sort of higher end office. Yep. But you have a viewpoint into the office across America and even beyond America. What are you seeing? Are you selling more office furniture? Are people putting up more offices? Are they hiring more people? Well, it's interesting. We're, we're, we're both residential right. and office, and we've been working hard to change the mix of business over the last few years. But yeah, about 60% of our revenue is tied to the office, the office world. And there we're seeing an interesting phenomenon that as employment gets tighter, um, the pressure to, to kind of create environments that attract and retain talent, the workplace is becoming a bigger part of what companies are using as a tool to recruit office workers. So there's an increasing investment Although it's happening in different parts of the office, there's clearly an increasing investment in workplaces. So that's good for your business. It's great for a, our a business. A tighter workforce, to some extent, actually drives your business, not just because there are more offices, because they have to attract more people and keep them. And they're competing for talent with other like companies. The other thing that's changing is the mix of social versus individual areas in the office is changing. So more and more companies are investing in collaborative areas and meeting areas, and that also plays to our strength. And Andrew, are you finding as more workers are working from home, independent contractors, mm -hmm. that you're providing office furniture at home and kind of crossover furniture? Well, well it's interesting. We're, we're finding that um, the workplace is still has the primacy that it always had and everything, and that the whole idea of working at home and kind of keeping people isolated is less of a factor. What we're more seeing is people in co-working environments in kind of shared workplaces, and the values they're seeing in those environments are filtering over into corporate offices. So the idea of providing more hospitality services, more food services, more collaborative and meeting areas, more informal areas, that's all playing into our business, and that plays to our strength, because we have experience both in how people live and work. Uh, you mentioned that there, you, it's a lot about experience is what I'm getting from you, like exactly. creating the experience. So does that mean that you see that businesses are hiring more people or they just need to make the environment better to keep the people they already have? It's both. Millennials, when they're out there looking at jobs and opportunities, um, you know, after you get through pay and benefits, the physical environment, what it says about a company's culture, how they view their workers, that's all reflected in the, in the actual office design. And our products play a big role in creating an environment that wants to help clients attract and retain chain workers. So that all plays to our plays to our strength. And you have four plants manufacturing yes. furniture, three in the U.S., one in Canada. Are you having difficulty recruiting workers? Exactly. It's interesting. We're not having trouble recruiting workers into our plants in, in the U.S. or um, in Canada. What we are seeing are challenges on input costs and inflation, and some of the other factors that are kind of impacting the business, but not in terms of attracting talent. Well, and you are international, so what about yeah. trade? Are you concerned at all about tariffs, about the trade possible wars? Well, you know, it's interesting. We, um, in, in the case of some of the tariffs and everything, in terms of steel and everything, we actually don't use any imported steel, but the threat of steel tariffs has kind of raised our overall consumption costs, and so certainly that's forced us to look at, you know, actions to raise prices, to invest in incremental lean initiatives in our plant, and actually I think has run counter to a lot of the good stuff in terms of tax reform, where we as a full taxpayer have, are benefiting. And even though you said you're not having difficulty recruiting, have you had to raise your wages in the tight labor market? Yeah, you know, the, the inflation on the labor side is well within the, you know, one and a half to three percent range we've been running for the last couple of years. The accelerated inflation is really on the commodity side. And again, I think that's more through the threat of tariffs and some of those some of those initiatives. So you were mentioning that you were talking about sort of a, a pricing power and increasing your prices to offset yeah. the input costs. Do you feel like you have pricing power versus? You know, it's a we're in a very competitive industry and everything. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think in general, people are aware of the commodity inflation, the transportation inflation, and, and, and we do our best to try and offset that with our own lean initiatives, with consolidating our footprint, finding ways to be more efficient ourselves, and kind of price increases are the last thing we like to do. The other thing we're benefiting from is our change in the mix of our business. So we focus more on these social areas. Mm -hmm. Those are higher margin areas for us, mm -hmm. um, those more collaborative areas where design really makes a difference. So that's increasingly the area that we're getting a margin lift from in terms of the mix of what we're selling. And, Alan, and those that, don't use steel. Right. <laughs> and Alan, that raises the question, too, of when we're measuring you know, wage growth, how do you measure the experience? So if you're going to be retained because right. you're also dealing with a foosball table that you really like right. and like free snacks, how do you, you can't factor that into a tight labor market? Well, what companies often do is to look for ways to avoid raising pay, such as improving working conditions before they, they, they start to raise pay. Um, and that's 
going to reach its limits at a certain point mm -hmm. uh, if the unemployment rate continues to fall. But it's interesting that Andrew is not finding any yeah. additional wage pressure in spite of the unemployment rate falling down to 4.1 percent. What's also super interesting is that we're finding companies investing more in the individual areas. So the whole idea of height adjustability, ergonomics, so not just the social areas, but the individual areas of the workplace are also driving more investment. And that also plays to categories where we have growing strength and better margins.